Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, in the last lecture we discussed about polyatomic molecules. Today we will start with calculating the moment of inertia of water. So water as we know is a planar molecule with all the atoms that is the two hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atom they are all in one plane. So here we have the water molecule. So, this is the oxygen atom and these are the two hydrogen atoms and here we see the z axis and the y axis. The x axis is out of the plane of the water molecule. That means, if this is the water molecule then the x axis is out of the plane of the water molecule. Now, we can calculate the moment of inertia along the different axis. So, let us start with the z axis. So, we will calculate I z. So, because the oxygen atom lies along the z axis, so it will not contribute to the moment of inertia along the z axis. So, the only the two hydrogen atoms will contribute. So, I can write I z. So, the contribution from the hydrogen atom is the mass of hydrogen and then the perpendicular distance from the hydrogen atom to the z axis. We can see this is given by f. So, I can write m h f squared. Now, if you want to do it for the y axis, so we can write i y equals. Now, you see the center of mass does not lie or the oxygen atom does not coincide with the center of mass. So, the oxygen atom will also contribute to I y. So, we will have the mass of oxygen times we have h here that is the distance between the oxygen atom and the center of mass that is m oxygen h squared. Then we have the mass of hydrogen and as we can see this hydrogen is g distance away from the y axis. So, the mass of hydrogen times g squared also the other hydrogen atom is g distance away. So, we have another term another mass of hydrogen terms times g squared. So, we can write this as m 0 h squared plus 2 m h g squared. So, for any planar molecule the out of plane moment of inertia is equal to the sum of the two in plane moments of inertia. So, because the out of plane moment of inertia here is i x we can write i x equals i z plus i y. So, we can write this as m h f squared plus m oxygen h squared plus 2 m hydrogen g squared. So, in i z I made a mistake. So, it should be 2 it times mass of hydrogen because there are two hydrogen atoms. So, it will be 2 here. So, what we have is m oxygen h squared plus 2 mass of hydrogen f squared plus g squared. So, now let us use the real values. So, the real value that is the internuclease distance the OH bond length is 0 0.958 angstrom and the angle between 
the hydrogen oxygen hydrogen that h o h angle that is given by theta equals 104.5 degrees and the mass of hydrogen and the mass of oxygen are 1 and 16 atomic mass unit. So, we need to calculate if we know all these numbers from these numbers we need to calculate the values of f g and h. So, let us see first the value of f. So, as we can see this distance is f and this angle is theta by 2. So, we can write that f by r equals sin theta by 2. So, f I can write r times sin theta by 2. Now, theta by 2 equals 104.5 by 2 that is 52.25. So, what we can write here? We can write f equals 0 0.958 times sin of 52.25. If you do that, you get 0 0.79. So, the value of f becomes 0 0.7575. So, if we do the similar math, we get g equals 0 0.5213 and h equals 0 0.0652. So, if we put the values of f, g and h back into the expression of i z, i y and i x, what we get? We get is i z equals 1.148 angstrom squared a mu, i y equals 0 0.6115, we can write this a mu angstrom squared and i x becomes 1.760 a mu angstrom squared. So, now if we think in terms of a, b and c axis that is the principal axis of inertia. So, we can see that because here i x has the largest value. So, this will be our c axis. So, this will be i c, i y has the lowest value. So, that will be our i a and i z will be i b. This is because we have discussed before that i a is less than i b is less than i c. So, we can see that the moments of inertia are all different in the three different directions. So, because in this case i a not equal to i b not equal to i c and also i a is less than i b is less than i c, we can say water is an asymmetric rotor and we had already discussed this or mentioned this in the last lecture. So, now let us look into another similar problem. So, here we have a trigonal molecule which is uh, shown below. So, all the masses are m units. So, there are four atoms and all the four atoms are masses of m and all the bond lengths are of unit length. That means, the bond length is 1 and all the bond angles are 120 degree. So, we have to find the components of the moment of inertia along the x, y and z directions and we have to also find what kind of rotor is this molecule. 
So, because this is 120 and this angle is 90 degrees, so we know that this angle is 30 degrees. So, first we will find the moment of inertia along x axis and because these two atoms are on the x axis, these two atoms would not contribute. So, what we have is m times cos square 30 degrees plus m times cos square 30 degrees. So, that is 2 m cos square 30. So, that is 2 times m times 3 by 4. So, that becomes root 3 or sorry this is 3 m by 2. So, now we find i y the i y this atom will not contribute because it is sitting on the center of mass, but all the other 3 atoms will contribute. So, the contribution of this atom will be m times distance squared that is 1 and then we have 2 m sin square 30 degrees because then we are talking about the distance here. So, what we find is m plus 2 m times 1 by 4 that becomes m plus half or m plus m by 2 that is 3 m by 2. So, now we also need to find i z and because this molecule is in a plane. So, because of this planar molecule we can write i z equals i x plus i y as we discussed in the last problem. So, that is 3 m by 2 plus 3 m by 2. So, what we have is 3 m. So, I x equals 3 m by 2, I y equals 3 m by 2 and I z equals 3 m. So, we can see that because 3 m by 2 is less than 3 m. So, we can say that what we have here is I A equals I B less than I C. So, this is an oblate molecule or this is like a disc shape molecule. So, this molecule is a symmetric rotor of the oblate type. So, this brings us to the end of the discussion on rotational spectroscopy. Let us once revise what we have discussed so far. We have started by looking into the correspondence between linear and angular motion. We introduced the concept of angular velocity that is omega and angular momentum that is L. And we saw that for a polyatomic molecule, the moment of inertia I is given by summation i m i r i squared. So, we started discussing rotational spectroscopy with diatomic rigid rotors. We saw that the primary condition for obtaining a rotational spectrum is that the diatomic molecule should have a permanent dipole moment. Thus, homonuclear diatomic molecules are microwave inactive because they have no permanent dipole moment, but heteronuclear diatomic molecules are microwave active. The energy of a rotating system is given by L squared by 2 i, where the angular momentum L is quantized and is given by root over j times j plus 1 h cross where h cross equals h by 2 pi. So, the energy of the jth level is given by 
e j that is h squared by 8 pi squared i j times j plus 1. The unit here is in joules. So, if you want to find the energy in wave number unit, then we have nu bar j that is E j by H c. So, we get H by 8 pi square I c j times j plus 1. And we saw we can also write this as b times j times j plus 1, where b is the rotational constant. So, we then looked into the selection rules for rotational spectroscopy and found that the selection rule for the changes in the rotational quantum number j is delta j equals plus minus 1. From this condition, we saw that the delta nu bar j is given by 2 b times j plus 1 for a transition between from j to j plus 1. So, this tells us that the lines in the rotational spectrum will be equally spaced by 2 b. Thus, b can be obtained directly from the rotational spectrum as b is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia. So, b is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia and moment of inertia is given by mu r squared, where mu is the reduced mass and r is the bond length or the internuclear distance. So, bond length or internuclear distance can be obtained directly from the rotational spectrum. So, then we discussed the isotope effect and we saw that the natural abundance can directly be obtained from the rotational spectrum. We then looked into the degeneracy of the rotational levels and introduced another quantum number m j. For any j, m j can take 2 j plus 1 values. So, each energy level is 2 j plus 1 fold degenerate. In general, the rotational energy is independent of m j, but in the presence of an external field, the degeneracy is lifted. Another selection rule that is delta m j equals 0 or plus minus 1 becomes important. We also discussed about the intensities of the rotational lines. We saw that j max that is the j level with a maximum population is given by j max equals root over k t by 2 b h c minus half. So, in order to find the j level with the maximum population, we have to choose the nearest integer of j max. We then moved on to non-rigid rotors and discussed the effect of centrifugal distortion. The knowledge of the distortion constant that is d provides us a rough estimate of the vibrational frequency nu bar. And finally, we looked into polyatomic molecules, the spherical rotor, the symmetric rotor, the prolates and the oblates and the asymmetric rotor. So, in the next lecture, my co-instructor Anirban Hazra will tell you more about the rotational wave functions and the selection rules. We will end today's lecture by solving a few more problems. So, here we have the first problem. So, we have to calculate the frequency in wave numbers as well as the wavelength in centimeter of the first rotational transition that is j equals 0 to 1 for d 35 C L. The moment of inertia of d 35 C L is given by 5.141 times 10 to the power minus 47 kilogram meter squared. So, we know the first transition comes at 2 b 
wave numbers. We also know that B equals h by 8 pi square i c. So, we can write 2 b equals h by 8 pi square i c times 2 that is h by 4 pi square i c. So, now if we put the values, so we have h that is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Then we have 4 times 3.14 squared times the moment of inertia that is 5.141 times 10 to the power minus 47 kilogram meter squared and then we have the speed of light that is 3 times 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second. So, if we do this calculation, we will get nu bar or 2 b equals 10.89 wave numbers. And we know that h c nu bar equals h c by lambda or nu bar equals 1 by lambda. So, we can write the wavelength is 1 by 10.89 that is 0 0.0918 centimeter. So, this is the wavelength in centimeter and this is the frequency in wave numbers for the first rotational transition of D 35 C L. So, let us look into the next problem. So, in the next problem, we have to find the J with the highest population for this carbon monoxide 12 C 16 O at room temperature. The value of B is given as 1.931 centimeter inverse. So, there is another question that is what is the ratio of the highest population to the population of j equals 0. So, because we are talking about highest population, we have to use the formula for j max. So, j max equals root over k t divided by 2 b h c minus half. So, if we put the values here, k is Boltzmann constant. So, this is 1.381 times 10 to the power minus 23 times T. So, this room temperature, so we will put 298 that is 25 degrees Celsius and we have 2 times B is given as 1.931 and H that is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 and C that is 3 times 10 to the power 10. So, if we do this calculation and we have minus half here. So, the answer to this is 6.82. So, we have to get the nearest integer. So, the nearest integer of 6.82. So, the j level with highest population is j equals 7. So, now we have to find the ratio of the highest population to the population at j equals 0. In other words, because j equals 7, the degeneracy g j equals 2 j plus 1 that is 15. So, we have to find n 7 by n 0. So, we know that n j by n 0 is given by g j e to the power minus e j minus e 0 by 
k t. So, E 0 we know is 0 and if we express in terms of b, we have can write g j e to the power minus b h c times j times j plus 1 divided by k t. So, here j equals 7. So, n 7 by n 0 that is given by g j that is 15 times e to the power minus 7 times 8 that is j times j plus 1 that is 56 b h c divided by k t. So, 56 b h c by k t equals 56 times 1.931 times 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 times speed of light that is 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 and we have k t that is 1.381 times 10 to the power minus 23 times t that is 298 and this value comes as 0 0.5223. So, n 7 by n 0 is 8.90. So, this is the ratio of the highest population to the population of j equals 0. So, we have another question. So, this is a multiple choice question. Energy of a rotational level is given as 30 b wave numbers. So, we have to find the degeneracy. So, the energy is given by B times J times J plus 1. So, we know if J equals 5, then J plus 1 we can write as 6 and then J times J plus 1 becomes 5 times 6 equals 30. So, we can easily find out here the value of j equals 5. So, the degeneracy is 2 j plus 1 that is 2 times 5 plus 1 that is 11. So, the answer is c and because the degeneracy is always 2 j plus 1 this is an odd number we know that 10 and 12 cannot be the answers. So, the answers could either be 9 and 11 and once we do the calculation we found the answer to be 11. So, there is another question that is the energy of the second rotational line in wave numbers. So, what is given is B equals 5 wave numbers. So, we have to find the energy of the second rotational line. So, if you look into a rotational spectrum the first rotational line is at 2 b, the second rotational line is at 4 b and here b equals 5. So, 4 b equals 4 times 5 that is 20. So, here we see that the correct answer is c that is 20.